welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I feel like I know you. I feel like I know you far better than I know you uh, because I uh, read you all the time. You have known Donald Trump for years. You have covered him uh, back in his real estate days. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask about last night. He talks a lot about unity and then at the same time says very divisive things. Do you think he's aware of the contradictions that exist when he speaks? No. Okay. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> And if, I can go into depth about that if you'd like. Look, I mean, A, I don't think he knows, and B, I don't think he cares. I yes. mean, one of the things that he did during the campaign, his particular talent was seeming to take both sides of an issue, sometimes in the same sentence. Yeah. And so last night you had the soaring rhetoric at the very beginning. Um, a couple of people compared it to, like, Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh -huh. It was like, here's the this part, and then here's that. <laughs> so there was, the, there, was the, there was the chorus of sort of unity and soaring rhetoric, and then we got to immigration and chain migration, as he talks about all the time, and limiting the number of people who can come to the country. And that is, that is where his administration has rested, is on those policies. And he does not see an issue. You say, you mentioned that thing about not caring. I think it's very unlikely, and maybe you can confirm this, that he ever finishes speaking anywhere and has a moment of self-doubt, or like, oh, no, that, those two don't make sense together. Um, he might have moments of self-doubt, but they're not about the things that you're thinking. <laughs> okay, um, he, he, is, he, might have, he has moments of self-doubt about, like, the visuals or how the scene looked or whether a particular line sounded good or he will test things out with different people. He's not thinking of it the way you're thinking of it. Got it. I'm starting to think I he and I don't think the same way about anything. No, <laughs> no. And, and I feel like we arrived at that a while ago when you were in the same room with him at the yeah, White House yeah, Correspondents' Dinner. Sorry, yeah. I can't get that out of my head. No, yeah, yeah, we had a different take on that <laughs> night, too. Um, uh, so I want to ask this. You, because you've covered him for so long, mm -hmm. uh, it does seem like he likes you and at times and then at other times does not like you. But you certainly have a relationship with him that provides you a decent amount of access. And is it true that he has... Uh, reached out to sort of criticize your work at times and, and gone so far as to sort of rate it? Um, there was one incident in particular where I was in the Oval Office uh, last year, and he was giving me a very hard time about a number of stories, and he kept saying something to the effect of, you never write fairly about me, and, da -da -da, and I reminded him of a story I had done about Mar-a-Lago that he had thanked me for. Um, which, to be clear, was not the goal of the story. And, um, and then he, he said, oh, that's right. And I think he said, I think that was about an eight or something like that. And it was not, <laughs> that's not normally what you hear in response. But no, I mean, look, I've gotten the angry reaction. I've gotten the Sharpie notes that an aide will take a picture of and send you. And then I've gotten phone calls thanking me for a certain story. And from each moment to the next, it's, it's like the other one didn't happen. Yeah. It, it just starts all over. You, because you've covered him for so long in his real estate days and no, I feel like how he used to behave versus how he behaves now. It does seem like he thought this job would be easier. Where do you think that comes from? So I think a few things. Um, a, I don't think he thought much about running for the, or what this job would entail other than running for it. I think, yeah. I remember having a conversation with someone close to him during, I think it was June maybe of 2016. And I said, does he, does he want to win, win, just win, is that it? Or does he actually want to be president? And the person stopped and said, you know, that's a really good question. I thought that is it indeed, and um, and I think that was the answer. And look, he would be pretty candid that he didn't spend a whole lot of time thinking about it. He was superstitious. Um, but I also think that his view of executive power was formed in the 1980s, and he's got this weird preserved in amber thing. His cultural references are all about like Time magazine and sort of movies and celebrities from a certain period of time, and that was sort of 1980s New York, which was a, a pretty corrupt city government where he was a real estate developer where laws and regulations existed to get around. And these were obstacles that you moved. And that's, I think, what he thought it was going to be like. It was basically going to be like mayor of the country. That's not what it is. It turns out that's not what it that's, is. It's much harder. What that. do you think would bother him more? Because he talks about the fake news and how he's unfairly treated in the press. Right. What would bother him more? A continuation of that or if no one ever wrote another word about it? That. Yeah. There you go. And do you think not he's even aware call. of that? And do you think he's... It, do you think he has a fear that a day will go by where he's not? Yes, the, yes, yeah. I, yes. I mean, even as president, I still think he has that fear. I had a, an ex-aide say to me uh, at one point that he, he can't go more than a few days without seeing his name in the news. And you will see, you know, there's this thing he does. He loves sitting in the dining room next to the Oval Office or wherever he's tweeting from. And he'll be watching television, and you, he'll tweet, and then he'll see the news change. And then he is suddenly on the screen, and he loves that cause and effect. So, yeah, I, he would, uh, he can't exist without 
the media. That, you know, again, I also think it would be pretty cool to be able to tweet and make TV change. Like, I don't you begrudge can't? him. No, it <laughs> takes hours. Uh, <laughs> but I, so I, I, I get that the instantaneous feedback of it. I, I, I guess I wish that um, it was more controlled. Uh, for a different purpose, For perhaps. a different purpose, yeah. yeah.